And so in video 1080, what we did basically was take this, which is the motor from a Hoover, and stick it in an upside down bowl to make this. Then when we put a bit of power on, of course, what's going to happen is this. It moves. It's a hovercraft. Now, it's not the most efficient of hovercrafts, that is certainly for sure. It's the kind of hovercraft you see when you put a balloon on a CD. This area here is what's called an open plenum, uh, and it is really the least efficient way of doing this that you could possibly come up with. And it does work, but reminds you terribly of air hockey. Now, some of the improvements you can make to this are in fact really, really simple. Now we've dropped that in there because the motor was nice and neat, but in the bits that we're going to do now, that motor will get in the way. So we want to do something just to move the motor out of the way. And what we've got here is a little bit of pipe. It's a 110 mil pipe and this motor will fit really nicely straight into that pipe. So let's get that fitted. Now we've raised that motor up a little bit, we can actually change this open plenum to a closed plenum by sticking another bowl inside. So I've got an identical bowl, I've put some little tabs on there and if we put that inside like that, then we no longer have an open plenum, we have a closed plenum and that works much better. It's actually much more efficient, so you apparently get more force. It's just a more efficient use of the air by directing it down the outside. So instead of creating a high pressure zone directly in the middle and then the air forcing out, it creates the, an air curtain here, high pressure, the air has to force itself out past the air curtain now, which has been directed. and we get a much better effect. You can actually see it lifting off a little bit. Now there's still a bit of a problem and the air is forcing its way straight down. It'd be much better if we could get the air to force inward at a 45 degree angle. And we can do that really simply by adding a plastic ring. So this is a bit of plastic ring that I've cut out and you'll notice all this brown stuff. This is all just that weather seal you find for doors and windows to stop the wind coming in. Then we put our plastic disc, so now the air is being forced out here, hits the plastic disc and is being forced in that direction, then it improves again the efficiency of this device. This time, you can actually see a distance between the desk and that plastic disc, and Notice how much easier that is to move. So that actually was really quite successful, which is cool. It is in fact the way hovercrafts went. However, you have to ask yourself the question, don't you? What happens if I put yet another bowl inside there? So that's exactly what I've done. What I've done is taken the second bowl that I put in, the mid bowl now, and cut another hole in it, and then I've put a third bowl in there. So we've got the outer bowl, middle bowl, and inner bowl, all as a three layer effect. Now if we give that a go. That really is very much better. It's actually quite impressive how much better it is. It's a bit quantitative, so I'm just telling it by pushing it, really. Now, this isn't my idea, okay? This is based on a uh, thesis uh, sponsored by the Air Force, the US Air Force, by Edward Kelleher, called A Study of Skirtless Hovercraft Design. And what we've done, actually, is create some coanda nozzles in there. So we're utilising the coanda effect, as well as hovercraft lift. So these two layers that we've got form coanda nozzles that force the air jet inside and then we get the pressure region inside of that and that's how we get our overall lift. So we've combined the hovercraft and the coanda principle together to create a more efficient design. Now there's a really good um, analysis of that and I'll put the link to the thesis so you can have a read. It is open source and you can have a read at it. Now, the improvements we make with this, of course, is these are just bowls stacked on top of each other, so the air comes down the side and hits at 90 degrees, and that's pretty bad, really. If we could curve that, then we would get the airflow going in a curve, and we get a much, much better result. But, for demonstrating the coanda effect in combination with the hovercraft, I thought it was a really good way of showing that. Anyway, it works beautifully. 
I would encourage you to replicate, I'd encourage you to actually investigate and think about those things about Coanda nozzles, the curvature of it and what you could possibly make it from. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the videos and thank you very much for watching.